Hi everyone. So let's paint Mother's Day flowers today. Uh, you can take shades according to whatever flower you have chosen. Here I have a zebra and a pink carnation. So I took my Daniel Smith shades as follows. Uh, for the background, I chose a darker value color, which was neutral tint. Uh, I mixed the orange with my cadmium yellow medium hue and pyrrole scarlet with a bit of quin gold. So I have taken a 440 GSM sheet here. And this is 100% cotton. Uh, for making loose watercolor art, uh, it is very necessary that we have <clears throat> a 100% cotton sheet. <clears throat> So here I am begin neutral tint first. I wetted the area around the flowers and the jar because I want to preserve the whites inside my subject which is the <coughs> flower and the vase. For the background I begin to soften the edges and drop in more value color as I go. I make it a point not to cover the whole of the subject from all the sides, right? So I give a uh, little uh, breather areas. Now I'm coming around the jar. The portion alongside the subject is wet, right? So I can easily soften the edges by taking them away from the subject. When you're not sure where you are supposed to add the darks, just go with light glazes kind of strokes. And later on, like here I'm doing, I am now adding the darker value color. So I have a little blueprint right on the paper where I am supposed to make it more darker. Adding a little bit of quin gold here so that uh, the atmosphere is compatible to my subject like my flowers contain those yellows and warm shades right so a little bit of color i have used uh, in the backdrop also now i immediately don't uh, put the darker values at one go right so i came back to this when it was semi wet like a bit drier and the color is not going to bloom that much. Now I wetted certain portions inside the jar. If you can see the reference picture, this was right in front of me when I was painting. So I can see some light and dark areas. That is how we are supposed to perceive it. Try not to look at the colors at one go because it becomes too much. So if you see the bottom of the jar, there are there is a lighter value area and then there are a few darks few gray areas and the white the glass jar is actually going to take in the color uh, bring in the hues from the backdrop right it is placed on a mat which has some red and uh, green florals so it is reflecting those shades inside it so right now i'm just trying to capture the gray areas okay and making sure that I'm not going inside the white areas at all because once you go it is very difficult to bring that transparency back so if in doubt leave a lot of white areas and just go in for areas which can you can absolutely perceive as darker same in my carnation I've started with the carnation with the wisteria shade using an angular brush here um, so I am not going to carve out any petals. Um, the first thing, actually the flower, uh, the way we can perceive the flower is a structure. So my outer shape is supposed to represent a carnation, right? And then uh, I am just going to give an impression of the petals, uh, only trying to capture the darks wherever possible, okay? If you see uh, what I am doing is I just put in the darker stroke and then soften it around at few places. I am going to come back to it but let it let the pigment settle now right now. 
if i try to move them around much then it will going to lose the contrast of the dark and the light now i'm going in for the stems first i went in with a light glaze of serpentine genuine and above that now i have taken a little thicker consistency mix this is on this is on wet on wet okay so you can see when i put the pigment it is going to move around a bit and here i wanted to uh, bring a darker value so i just put in some neutral tint on my serpentine genuine neutral tint is one of those shades where which you can use to um, you know mute or dull any any color without it getting muddy it's a beautiful shade so used i think i used a very small amount of cascade green here <clears throat> for the darker green because uh, greens are never a single shade uh, in nature and in your art also it shouldn't be it has to be a variation of what at least two or three greens <clears throat> so moving on to the jebra i'm uh, taking a very light uh, consistency a thin consistency of the shade which i mixed here with cadmium yellow medium hue and uh, pyrrole scarlet and a bit of quin gold which i really like it's very luminous and uh, this is wet on wet right now okay and see i go uh, back and forth between my flowers and my uh, accessory the secondary subject or the background uh, so you i can perceive the values correctly a light glaze of uh, wisteria i have used inside the jars because i want just wanted to take out the reflective colors in the water right a little bit of definition uh, no place i am placing uh, wet on dry okay the surface has to have a certain amount of moisture because i don't want any hard lines right now a little bit of correction wherever possible and here i am just taking the structure because here there is an hard edge forming right so it is a place where i can genuinely take out the structure of the petals it is not going to be a straight line or a curve it is very very uneven irregular so that is why i am creating the negative edge with the neutral tint now we're just moving in the gerbera again see i went from the gerbera to my jar and then to my background and back to my gerbera because uh, when i put the correct darker value in the background my subject automatically it starts uh getting a certain definition the white start popping out so then i can assess the current uh, correct amount of uh, color which i need to put in otherwise i would uh, overdo the flower and it will you know uh, it will start creating a conflict between the contrast so here i am uh, just trying to take out the edges of the flower at very very few places going inside and just uh, not uh, painting one single petal okay this is just demarcating areas between petals at few places <clears throat> there is no need to give the whole structure of the petal only note the dark portions uh, which you can assess from your uh, reference there is no need to copy your flower exactly what makes it a flower is the bunches of petals right and there's a light slight darker center um uh, darker rim around the center the center is actually lighter right so if we capture that correctly it will automatically uh, start coming out as the flower which we want now again i'm adding a few more darks here because adding darks next to the subject is going to help it pop out more right so i think i'll add a little bit more dark right at the edge 
going into the stem now uh, i only uh, you know uh, switch from the main subject to the accessory when i know the moisture is right to add pigments right give every space a little time once you have touched come back to it after 30 seconds or minute or so and then you add the next amount of pigment so as you can see all my areas are still uh, slightly wet they're not actually completely dry but i had to go back and forth to other areas and then come back to it for it to be ready i'm just uh, seeing the reference right now okay and trying just to uh, put some glazes of colors and then adding the darks softening the edges wherever i want if i keep working on the gerbera you know for uh, another 5 10 minutes it will start appearing very realistic so you have to decide when you feel that yes now it is quite perceivable as subject you want and then you can stop it to keep it uh, you know into the loose uh, category so it's better i work on the adjacent areas rather than right in the center which obviously needs a little bit of definition but i'll come to it after i've uh, uh, brought the correct dark value around the subject I think it's time now for for us to go into the jabra. Yeah. So now this is uh like nearly dry. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thin consistency mix and then I'm going to soften it with a clear water brush, right? So I don't have to let it stay for long. on the paper otherwise it will start giving me a hard edge so i'm doing small portions and then softening it with a plain water brush the direction of your strokes is very important because that direction is going to give the direction of the petal right trying not to go into the center too much i just want the uh, values to be correct on my paper as i can see or perceive from the reference the longer i keep staring at the reference the more i can perceive the values better So I did a little negative edge at the top left instead of painting the petal. I went around it. Now I've uh, started painting with a little thicker consistency, but I am immediately softening it so there is no hard edge, and the pigment is still getting settled into that area. to make the values deeper further uh, i usually take uh, the help of the color adjacent to what i have taken like if uh, i mix up sheet of orange here i took the pyrrole scarlet added it in a little more quantity and um, then i made a deeper orange okay i don't want to go in with the uh, blacks or browns or blues here because my value scale is towards the lighter end right a uh, little bit more definition as per your choice like whenever you want to stop i can keep it this loose or i can just go in and try to darken it further the center has uh, cadmium yellow and i'm using that cadmium yellow some at some places on the petals where it is catching the light 
so it is not an isolated yellow right in the center okay now you can see that the color of the flowers is getting reflected uh, inside the jar around the jar at few places so it uh, becomes a very um, you know connected and a cohesive uh, composition it's not like there is a block of orange and a block of pink and a block of darks okay everything is uh, seemingly interacting so this is a very light glaze of quin rose actually yeah it's going to dry lighter because it's very thin consistency so this is the mid value which i tried to take and uh, the lightest value i always try to keep it as uh, white of the paper a little bit of definition to the stems where ever needed this is done with the rigor brush okay this is simply serpentine genuine in a thicker mix and if needed i'll add a bit of a neutral tint to it so now i am watching and i saw that the carnation needed a bit more volume so i took out a negative edge petal right there i felt as compared to the gerber it is lacking a bit of volume So, because I have kept areas which are not, um, you know, blocked with pigment, I can still uh, create uh, or manipulate a bit of the structure around the flower. So now I am uh, a little bit of uh, white corrections can be done by the gouache, right? especially when you are creating uh, water was or water bodies you know it was on my reference also which was placed right in front of me so you can bring about a little bit of the white back if you have gone into those areas by mistake and uh, a little bit on the subject also although it dried up and did not give me that effect which i wanted but uh, this this is how you capture the light falling on the object you know so here i'm trying to create a secondary uh, diffused flower here to give more volume to my subjects and a little bit of green mixed with neutral tint to create a muted green for the reflections inside this is as per we you know what you see in the reference so here it is finished and signed mm, i hope you liked it please leave a comment or uh, hit up a like if you did thanks for watching